so with it, it's your boy Loth. I'm back. Another episode of True of Spirit. Today I got my guest, homeboy J Flow. Called that. Chipper D, D Tan Daddis. What's up with it, bro? Man, it's going to that. Salute, man. What's up with it? Appreciate the invitation, bro. Oh, man, you already know, man. Just show my love to all my artists out here in D Town, shit, Texas, everywhere. Shit, we just, you know, putting the spotlight on, on the talent. Basically, man, shit. But yeah, bro, how you doing, bro? Appreciate you coming through. Yeah, like I said, man, I appreciate the invite, man. I've been great. I've been blessed, man. I appreciate you. Uh, so, ready, shit. So, how you been, man? Shit, uh, I, I know we've been kind of uh, known each other in the game for, for a couple of years. For sure, yeah. Years, bro. Every time I see you, I salute you, man. You always yeah. grind. Every time, you know, we'll first with man, stay on the grind. Yeah, and such. I know I've seen you into them. Uh, I've seen you at them car shows, uh, with at the Mesquite Rodeo. Yep. A year or two ago. For sure, man. And we, and Sonar, we, did I see you at the Sonar Rule Sound yeah. back in the day? Yeah, Shout out to that boy Mo also out there in Houston, man. He used to do the, the Sonar Rosa car show back in the day. That shit, that shit was crunk. But yeah, man, what you got going on? Uh, well, like I said, uh, man, I've been, I've been all over the grind, man, just trying to get my music together, you know, trying to get my money right. And for a long time, like I said, I was doing mixtapes because when I first came out, I was trying to be, you know, I was, I was following the trend, you know, yeah. uh, mixtape, rapper shit. So I was doing that. So it was this back in the probably like early 2000s? Like, I was I, right in, it's a little over a decade, right? Okay. Yeah, over, that's when all the mixtape shit that's when it started popping and everything. Remember that? And it was hot, you know, everybody, you know, yeah. had like a little mix flow, you know. Yeah. So I was trying to figure out, oh, I was trying to figure out my, you know, my technique. Yeah. What kind of beats would you freestyle to back in this day? Can normally, you, can you name some? Do you remember yeah. any? Yeah, normally I would just like go on YouTube, you know, and I'll pick mm -hmm. out like, you know, the hardest beats that I would hear, you know. So, like any beat that I could hear that I was like, man, that, that had potential, I would rent, yeah. you know, I would try to wreck it as best I could. What kind of beats were you into? Were you like, like Texas, Southern shit, you know, Lil John, ATL shit, or like East Coast, West Coast type beat? And I like them all, but I I like Wendy and Aaron Merle, Cali, you know, said that Cali, Dr. Dre, I like Dr. Dre, yeah. uh, Alchemist, East Coast, okay. and then even South, South Side oh, Beach, baby. you know, from, uh, from Atlanta, you know, like Little John and stuff, but. Just the mix out of all uh, that combination, yeah, fusion. Yeah, for sure. Already. We had a nice little beat out Rocky, you know. Yeah. That's a sub shit. Uh, I, I mean, named Alchemist, not a lot of people. Well, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mace ain't know by Alchemist. Yeah, man. he's a dope producer, right? So, yeah. Producer, that's what's up. He did a lot of beats for, uh, that's a lot of beats for Lady Bear yeah. and Nas. Yeah. So, that's one of the artists that I've been already. And Nas. I used to bump Nas back in the day, too, bro. Shit, uh. He been, he's cold, man. If you listen to his name, he's yeah. like, he, he's like a, he's on top of it. Like a poet. Yeah, a poet, man. Because, like I said, there's not many like him, especially yeah. from the, from the generation of hip hop, you know? Yeah. Man, from the get go. He was around the greatest, you know, from the Tupac, the Biggie, and JC, yeah. and then like it was a, it's like a class of of G's, you know, from back in the day. They, you know, only few make it. Rest mm -hmm. in peace to uh, Tupac and Biggie. Yeah, you know, saying DMX and Nipsey, everybody, man. Cause like I said, it's a we're all in it together, man. But it's a culture thing that a lot of people don't get it. You know, like just cause we're Hispanic and they're black, we we try to separate ourselves. But at, at the end of the day, if we all come together, we all do all the same. We all do it for the same purpose. Yeah, exactly. Chill spill right there. Yup. Yeah. yeah, man. So, uh, what you got going with the projects? You said you you about to just drop a new one, right? Yeah. I've been like I said, um, for a long time. I've been in the studio, man. I was like in the studio for like five nights a week, bro. So, I would go to the studio. Then after that, I would leave. I go to the club. I go over the pool. I go hustle. Yeah. And like it, 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 it gets to you. You know, sometimes you know you don't. You, you're on this path, and you just like you know you steady going and going and going. And then sometimes you you don't you don't take time to enjoy life with your family. Yeah. You know, um, because you're only here for so much for, for so long. You know, so you got to do you got to take advantage of that time. And so for a long time I was in the studio, bro. And like, um, it just so, yeah, you said you were in the studio what, four or five times a week. Yeah, like five nights a week. You know, so I made it like. Uh, Cause first I was in the club a lot, yeah. and then I feel like you know, like I have to switch it up because I want to be consistent. So what clubs were these? Uh, well, shit. Back in the day, you know, it would be at the strip clubs or it'd be the you know light bars. You know, I'd be at the bars with the homies kick, kicking in. Yeah. So I wasn't really taking it serious like I should because, like, I didn't. I guess I didn't have my head right. You know, I was just trying to get money, get money. Yeah. So for a lot of times at the strip clubs, solo rose up. 
She read yeah. the Tigers. And Tigers, they just see to the point that I, you know what I'm saying? I was in there getting money too much that they started noticing this, that, like, you know, they started like, I started getting bad. So I'm like, all right, shit happens for a reason. So ever since then, I just started focusing more at my music, going in the yeah. studio. And like I said, I've been writing for a long time, bro. Like, even if I didn't, even if I didn't have the flow, I would always write every day. Yeah, like you come to my house, I'd be right there in front of the computer writer. Yeah. So for a long time, I was writing. So I guess, you know, you be consistent with your, with your skill. You know, eventually you're going to get good at it. You know, you sharpen up your skill. It's going to be, it's going to be sharp. So that happened. And then I had all this music and I was like, man, I was trying to drop it, but then Corolla happened mm -hmm. and it put a pause on life on everybody's life because if you didn't have your money right, you were struggling. So thank God that that went out of alert and <laughs> some type of shit. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't gonna see it. That's a, that money lost with the bands over here and shit. So yeah, bro, like for a long time I was in the studio taking a break and like I, I was like, man, I need to do something with the music. So I had all my music was postponed after that. Cause I've been dropping mixes, like, like at least 10 mixes that I dropped. You know, I had the 420, Kush 420, and then on Valentine's, I'm dropped uh, King of Hearts. And then you dropped that this year? Or? Well, I would do it like every other, every year I would drop like at least four mixes, yeah. you know, every quarter. So for the Valentine's, I would do the King of Hearts for the ladies. So it was like a mixtape, but it also had like some original beats. So that's when I started switching it up more, you know, yeah. I started doing like R&D, started doing a little bit of that, you know, the panty dropping music, who all had us to that. <laughs> Us to the R&B singer, my boy, Susia, Susuka, and you know, he said, uh, been writing songs for a minute. How long, how long you think you've been doing that? Well, shit, I guess with how old were you when you wrote your first song? Man, I'll tell you straight out, bro. Since I was young, yo, I, I would just write poems, you know, like I was yeah. very poetic. I, I, well, I thought I was poetic, I thought I was being Mr. Little Romeo. But yeah, but I would always get my heart broken because yeah. I was like, man, it just I, either, I used, to, used to either fuck with the wrong girl where they had boyfriends or I just didn't I didn't have a connection. So a long time ago, I had like a photo full of poems and I just threw that shit away. I said, man, fuck love, you know what I'm saying? So I started focusing more on that on that rap shit. Yeah, and like, yeah, bro, it was just poems, you know. I remember just you know like I remember uh, La Bamba. That was the first song that I was like, you know, that I was intrigued. You know, the girl, Ray J. Islands, La Bamba, La Bamba, La Bamba. So that was the song that kind of like captivated me at a young age to figure out that I wanted kind of drew your attachment to music. How long does it take you to finish the song, pull one together? Well, let's say, let's say um, I get home. It depends on what type of song it is. Yeah, 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 I can get home. I have to be in the mood because sometimes you have so much on your mind yeah. you can't think straight. So it can be- writer's block and all that shit. You know, I, I push myself to a limit now where <coughs> Now, like, you know, we could be in the studio and I could do, we can, not to sound cocky, but, you know, I'd be in the studio and if the right beat is right and the energy is right, yeah, we could do that yeah. now. But sometimes you need time to sit back and, and really put those words together because, you don't, you know, you really want to put time into it. So you don't want to just do whatever, like, oh, fuck the pull and then and they're half ass right. shit. Half ass. So, yeah, it takes me, like, at least a little lot. It takes, like, one day to put it together. It, 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 sometimes I'm in a rush to go to the studio, so I'll pick up two beats and I'll do like, you know, two, I'll do uh, two verses, one hook, mm -hmm. and I'll go to the studio and record it. So I try to do two songs at, every time I go to the studio and record a so. song. When you record it, you got your own studio or you go to different yeah. uh, spots? Right now I go to, uh, shout out to uh, Norby Ever. I go mm -hmm. to the ghetto house. Shout out Norby. Yeah. Old ass producer right yeah. then. Yeah, for real. Need him on the show too. Yeah, for sure. You hear that, Norby? And my boy Little Lorby too, man. Shout out to my boy Little Lorby, man. I be going oh, both of them. So I've been knowing them for a gecko, man. Cause like I said, when I when I first started doing music, that's where I started with, you know, with Little Norby and Big Norby. That's what's up, man. That's where you go record most of the stuff over us. Yeah. Sure. For now, because like I said, until I get my whole studio, then I'll be in the house, you know, try to get it put all together because, you know, it, like I said, it takes money and it takes time. Yeah. So like for a long time, like I said, I was paying two producers. Plus, I was paying my rent, you know, so all that shit adds up. Yeah, I was like, man, I'm paying for an extra apartment. I could be living in uptown. But it is what it is, man. You got to pay. You got to invest in yourself. You don't do it. We're talk. Now, yeah, man, uh, I saw another day that uh, you were performing over there in, uh, what was it, Fort Worth, right? It was this past yeah. weekend. Yeah, recently, Sunday. What was the name of that show? It was uh, the Texas Trill. Texas 
But hold on, let's see. Texas take over all oh, okay. time. Yeah, and I was out there in Fort Worth. I saw that uh, Slip Thug was over there, Lil Kiki, Flip, Lil Flip. Okay, shout out to the legends. Now, I was there, out there in Funky Town. What's up, Funky Town? Man, it was dope, bro. It was, it was hot, but it was dope, you know? And uh, shout out to the little Bacana we were drinking. Yeah. It was hot in the bird. So I'm mad. But it was, it was, it was weather. It was, it was lit, though. You, you performed out there? Yeah. I, yeah. I performed, man. It was like, it was a nice, you know, it was a nice show out. It was like a lot of people, you know, a lot of beautiful women out there, you know, shout out to all the beautiful women. And uh, yeah, man, you know, you gotta go out there and network and show your face and put your work out, especially, I was a little nervous because like I said, I performed three songs that are new. And you know, I, I've been rehearsal, rehearsal, full on set. But like I said, sometimes it, it happens, you know, you, mm -hmm. you get nervous, you get, you know, because you, you're out there, you know, and that's what you need to do, you need to perform. Like sometimes like a lot of artists don't get it that you know, it ain't just about the music, it's about the performing. Yeah. Because when you perform, you're acting your music, you perform. People don't want to see a whack ass, yeah. stiff ass performance. Yeah. It's a show, it's yeah. either you're an artist, you know? Mm -hmm. So definitely, man, like I said, we're out there. It was a beautiful thing, man, like mm -hmm. I said, went out there, did my thing, performed my new songs. And I got the name of those songs, you said you did three new ones? Yeah, I got one that's called Money Lingo. Mm -hmm. And that's actually going to be, that's one of the singles on the new album that's dropping uh, this year, hopefully. It's called A Rookie of the Year, the album. Or no. I said later this year? Yep, it should be hopefully by um, after summer, like maybe in a couple of months, I would think, you know, I already have, this, already have the songs already recorded. I just gotta mix and master them and put them together. So play, mm -hmm. put the playlist. You know, already got the um, the, uh, the art cover. Who matches it, Norby? Knows that as well. Norby for sure. Cause like I'll tell you straight out, Norby makes sure that your lungs, your soul is like sounding right. So, like I said, I definitely I like A one. Yeah, for sure. You need your sound to sound A one. It can't sound all like too much bass or not enough. You know, tweak. You know, your son, your son. You got any more shows you got? Any upcoming shows? I think we have more upcoming shows in the, in the next month or two. You know, like I said, uh, I, I started linking up, uh, started working with Jordan Lopez, and how to Jordan Lopez, man, you know, like he's he's one of those persons that if you got that work, he should. And shout out to the homeboy George Lopez out there, man. If y'all don't know, that's a legend of the city, man. OG right there for real. One of the few people was like, you know what I'm saying? That if you're from Dallas, you don't know about G Lo, shit, you need to Google them. Yeah. But yeah, man, how'd that come about, y'all? You know, how y'all link up? Like I said, a couple years ago, like, I would say like more than a couple years ago, I was out there, you know, we we're doing a little D-Town Coalition, shout out to Two Co. You know, they were doing uh, the D-Town Coalition with, uh, where they link up with artists and they, they give out information of how to get your research out there to the next level. So I, I linked up with Lopez. I gave him a copy of my mixtape. Mm -hmm. You know, he listened to it. He gave me he gave me a call back. He said, let's let's sit down for a meeting. And at that time, I wasn't ready to take it to the next level. So, um, you know, when the time was right, you know, like yeah. I said, God would put the people in your life, <laughs> the right people. So we linked up recently this year, you know, things out this year. True, true. I got my paperwork ready, you know, got my label, my company, and then I linked up with Lopez, and here we are, you know, taking it to the next level. Yeah, out there uh, doing shows and... Yeah, he's doing, he's opening doors, man, like I say, he's, uh, he just, oh, we, every week we'll meet up and he like, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. And I'm like, man, I told myself, this this month's one of the busiest months for me, you know, man. Yeah. I, I started realizing, I was like, wow, you know, like, the thing about, you know, people like George is like, they'll give you a plate mm -hmm. and it's up to you to make a touchdown, it's up to you to make a hole. A lot of artists don't get that. A lot of artists think that, you know, that they expect that they expect the other person to make the plate for them. Like, that's True. really life, bro. You know, God will give you a blessing, but it's up to you turning into bigger blessings for others. So, real deal. True spill right there. Boop, boop. Well, that, a deep. So now that's how you know we still work it. Now tell me about your label, uh, Money Gold Entertainment. How did that come about? Man, that's crazy because, like I said, for a long time we're going to be like almost like ten years, right? I, I had that name. I had the name of the entertainment. I, I like I said, I'm still learning the entertainment business, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what I was going to call it. I really didn't know because I had so many names. So I was like Money Gold T. You know, back in the day, Money Gold was money. So. Mm. I look at it like either way it goes, you know, you can either have, you know, money 
And a lot of, you know, like this happens every day with jewelry, with rappers, you know, they buy diamonds, they buy jewelry, but the value on diamonds, you know, it always goes down just like when you buy a car. But the money, the value of the gold never goes down. It's either going to go. Gold is always worth something. Yeah, it no. goes up. So I was like, all right. So put that together. And then, like I said, this year, because I've been trying to do it for a long time, bro. I've been trying to get everything together. And mm -hmm. it's just like, it wasn't right or the right people weren't together, you know, weren't there. So when it happened this year, I linked up with a, uh, with this beautiful girl, one of my friends, you know, she she um, she already had the LLC. She just she, she kind of threw me a play, and I just managed to say, "Fuck it, let's do it. Let's call it Money Going Lent." And uh, I had the money, so I said, "Okay, we're gonna go with that." And then I started asking questions, and then under that, we did the DBA, and that's the record label called Royalty Live Records. Yeah. And the reason why I call it Royalty because you know, if you if you're an artist, you want to live off your royalties. Yeah, yeah, that's really that's really the number one way you're gonna live off your music. You can live up, you know, and a lot of people are famous, but they're broke. So mm -hmm. if you don't know about the royalties and your paperwork in this music industry, bro, you're just going to be somebody that was famous. And a lot of people are cool with that. Like mm -hmm. nowadays, you see a lot of people that are famous, but they don't have the value that they're really worth. Yeah. So that's one thing that I applied to this music industry that I said, money, gold, and tea for gold. And then royalty life, because I, I want to live that. I want to live my life off my royalties. So I combined that, and here we are, my G. Well, it's a lot of fat. Already. It ain't easy, my G, because I tell you straight out every day, you know, but I, hey, by the grace of the Lord, you know, we made it happen. And I say, give me, I say, give me time. I ain't gonna say, I ain't gonna say numbers because when you put numbers, they can either hold you back or, or bless you. But I say, give me some time, my G. Like I told Lopez, man, I don't want, eventually the deals are gonna come. Yeah. yeah. The deals for the labels and this and that. But I want to put that word because I feel like there's a lot of work to be done. And you have that resume behind it. We have to, man. Like, a lot of people think that, you know, they're very talented. Shout out to everybody that's talented in Dallas, from Texas. you a worldwide universal, man. That's what we're doing, man. We do it, you know, for the world. So for the world to see what you're bringing to the table. You know, Chico? Yes, sir. So, <laughs> yeah, my Jimmy. Well, here's Chico. Yeah, so here we are, my Jimmy, because like I said, you know, you want to live off your royalties. So... It takes time for it takes time, bro. But a lot of people are not willing to invest in themselves, and that's one thing that I did. They want to get to the end product without having to put in that work. They yeah. want the 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 outcome. Yeah, and there's a lot of talented. There's a, there's a lot of talented artists, bro. They feel like they deserve to blow up, and I'm getting like I hear everybody. No lie, this is something that you probably hear every day. I'm next. I'm most. I, I stopped saying that shit, bro. I'm like, okay. If you're next, you're next. But I tell you know, time will take. Time will say because the only thing I could take that away from you, yeah, you know, true. I just gotta let the work speak for itself too. No, yeah, let the work speak for itself. Second, move in silence. One of uh, the biggest things that we should do more often. I think you gotta gotta evolve and uh, uh, change as you're well. Right. You're right, man. Because right. if evolution, you, exactly evolution. Because if you're uh, if you're still the same person you were. Say what five years ago, but you didn't learn anything. You know, say you're not, you don't have better habits. So you got to break those habits. Different tactics. You know, saying if something wasn't working for you, then man, you shouldn't. You need a yeah, no, you need a ball, baby. Come on, yeah. You gotta like I said, you're right because man. that's part of being. That's part of growing. You know, we can't have the old mentality. You know, growing up, we wanted to be in the hood. We want to be yeah. langing. We want to be in the club. I mean, like I said, I get tired of everything nowadays. Like I go to the club just to show love, but yeah. you know, you you rarely see one of the club now because like I'm starting to sell all that. I get what you mean. It's just like well, back when I was younger, when my thirties now, when I was younger, twenties, you know, what I'm saying like nineteen, eighteen, shit. Back in the day, we used to stay at the club, and yeah. now that was that was the play. That was back truly, that was truly. We wanted to be seen, and, and like I said, yeah, you were exactly. Right. We did. We didn't. We didn't know better. Either. But it ain't all wrong, man. Because like I say, you're here with your people and you're having a good time. Enjoy it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, enjoy that shit, but just know that shit don't last. Yeah. You know, Go get lost to the sauce. Because exactly. family, hey, familia is everything. And I'm going to tell you one thing. Now that they congrats to my boy, you do that. I already appreciate that. Hey, appreciate bless him, my brother. Man. Because that's a beautiful yeah. blessing right there for real. Appreciate it. You know what I'm So, man, when you have your family and you have something you can hold to, that means more than that means more than anything. Because you could be in the studio all day, all week, but when you come to your family, it's a separation. They're like, man, you know, you're doing this for a reason, you know. And, and yeah. if you really want it, you go out there and get it. And it's, it's just waiting because it's out there, just waiting for you. Yeah. Real shit. 
So yeah, bro, uh, all these projects, how many do you say you'd have like, like total overall, like the ones you've done? Like, oh, I was, man, let's say, okay, so let's say, look, I'm gonna, we're gonna go for the mixtape, right? <laughs> so it was like, um, let's see, let's go from the beginning. I'm gonna mix it. I did one a long time ago with one of my cousins. But you know what's crazy? When I first came in the, in the mix, bro, my cousin was the one to put me on. It's Rob Padilla, you know, he he had the money. Mm. He was like the yellow sugar nights because <laughs> he had the money. He was boss hogging, and like I said, shout out to boss hog, Slim Thugger. And I don't know. He used to listen to a lot of Slim Thug, man. And I was like, when I was growing up, bro, I remember growing up, my brother was the hip hop head. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He like, he'll be bumping that hip hop, and, and I'll be like, hey, turn that shit down, it's too loud. <laughs> and I was just like, I would listen to, um, you know, like, I feel two boys to man, you know, because I was a lover boy, bro, since I was little. I used to always get my heart broken, little lover boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so I listened to uh, Boys to Man, Brian McKnight, uh, Baby Faith, you know, to the point where it, it, it kind of stuck to me. Even Michael Jackson, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're Prince, too. Pr hey, I'm not going to lie. I'll, I'll ride around, I'll listen to Prince, and I'm like, because that's, that's, a, that's a classic. Brian yeah. Jamison some Prince. Well, I was watching a movie earlier, they have Prince. Yeah. Yeah, study the study his music. Study the greatest, bro. You want to be great? Yeah. Study the greatest. Yeah, true, true. You know what I'm saying? They put up different. Yeah, no, it was yeah. different genres. I'll listen to the links. I listen to I, I listen look. I listen to country. Listen to Spanish. I listen to the classics. I listen to Christian music. I listen to pop. I listen to everything. That just you know, because I get tired of hip hop. But I always listen to to different. Because entertainment is entertainment. Remember that. You just gotta have an open mind. Yeah, sad, but open be open minded to like to yeah. bring new flavor to the table because if you're stuck in a circle and you're only going to do certain style but you've got to be versatile and people like versatile nowadays mm -hmm. everything is different now nothing matches everything's different so like like what my boys say you know you got to evolve with the with the culture and it's and it's a beautiful thing once you evolve and understand the music true it's like they say it works in the definition of the people band and he's doing the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. and expecting a different nah, yeah, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I say, you know, you got to like learn to reflect on your actions. Like a lot, a lot of people don't do that. So I had to reflect on it. Like I said, I, I used to listen to Usher. I still listen to Usher. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. me too. And I was a youngster. Yeah, child and leader. You know, so I done done like my cousin, like I said, he, he, he put the first project. And he put the money, but this is what's crazy, bro, because, like, he put the money, and the only reason he invited me to be in the mixtape because his homeboy didn't want to be in it. Yeah. He didn't want to be in it. He was like, at the last minute, he chickened out. So I said, fuck it, let me get the chance. That's how you got, like, on your first. That's how I, got first, that's how I first got on the first mixtape, and I promise you that mixtape sucked. <laughs> it sucked to me. But, I, I mean, you could tell while I was hitting the lines here and there, I hit a rhyme here and there, but it was just sloppy because that was my first introduction to the point that I didn't even want to put my name on there. I put... J flow, but I put two O's at the end. So then my cousin didn't even want to give me no copies. He's like, man, you're gonna go out and sell out. Yeah. So it's like that's the first back when it was CD. This is the first time when like when I first did my first thing, I like the first time I felt like, you know, I got introduced to the game because, you know, someone that has the money that controls the power of the music is only gonna control how far you can go. Mm -hmm. So when he didn't give me copies, it pissed me off, bro, to the point because our family. And my old family did it to me, and I'm like, damn, that's fucking cold. So you didn't get no copies? Didn't, he, he didn't want to give me no copies because he, he thought I was going to go sell out. So I was like, all right, fuck it. So then that just gave me more rage. That's burn some. It gave me rage, bro. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had to copy now because, it's, like I said, it's a classic. But I like it gave me the rage to kind of keep going because that's when I first started. I always wanted to give up. I remember I was like 18 or 17. I don't remember. But I've always been in the music because I started as a DJ. I bought my turntable set. You know, a box. It's called DJ Box. I mean, yeah. you know, you call the turntable, speakers, and a mixer. And all you have to do is get the speakers and throw a party. So as soon as I got my setup, threw a party. And that's how I started getting the buzz around the block, you know, the hood and the schools. That, you know, I started as a DJ. I used to be called DJ Reckless. DJ Reckless. Yeah, DJ Reckless. I went from trip. You know how to screw a child. No. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can, though, but I took a break, bro. I tell you, I took a break. Like I said, I, I learned to evolve with the music from, from what break that is in to the MC, to the turntable, and now I'm over here, like, you know, being a rapper, so. But I don't call myself a rapper, I call myself more of an, of an artist. An artist, and I, I'm versatile, bro, so. That was one of, that was the first mixtape that I did with him, I don't remember the name, and then I did another one, because I listened to Usher, and he had that one, remember, uh, Confessions? Mm. Remember the album, Confessions? Oh, yeah, yeah, so. That was after he put out that, uh, You Got It Bad. You called me? I remember You Got It Bad, back in the day, I think I was in middle school when that came out. Well, 
But everybody was jamming that shit. Yeah, Usher, Usher was the Usher is the man, man. So I think black, Mexican, yeah. fucking Indian, whatever you were. Nostra, <laughs> all fold. Yeah. Megan Soul. Hey. I did so that was my second one. It was called Confessions of a True MC. I remember recording that. I recorded with DJ Kane. Shout out to my boy DJ K. No, oh, AJ Kane, A9.3. Yeah. Shout out to so I started with him. Okay. Yeah, I started recording like you joined the show too. The show, man. Familia, pull up. And uh, if I did that, Confession of a True MC, that was my first like, like rap slash R and B mixtape. Cause I had a couple of love songs and I had a couple uh rap songs. So it was fucking dope because like I took something that somebody did right and I turned it into my own. So I, he did Confessions. I did Confessions of a True MC, mm -hmm. meaning like Confessions of an MC, and that came up pretty dope. And like I said, I kept doing it. Then I linked up with my boy, Josie Nero from Exodus. Shout out to my boy, Vegas too. Benny. From Exodus, man. So like I said. So what, Vegas? Yeah, man. Shout out to my boy. At that time, they were like, they, the Exodus group were like, kind of like, they were about to break up, you know? Mm. I guess everybody had their own little thing going on. So I linked up with Joe from a homeboy Conejo. He said, like, holla at your boy, you know, holla at a homeboy. And we linked up. He took me out of town, San Antonio room. He took me to San Antonio to do my first show. Mm. And uh, we, yeah, bro, ever since then, I've been on the mix, I've been on the grind. So I at least got 10 mixtapes, bro. 10 mixtapes, you know? It's a lot. Yeah. 10, 10 mixtapes total. 10 mixtapes right, that I've done already. Yeah. Not including what I already have lined up. Like I said, I got um, I got a few projects coming now. I got the um, Ambitious of a Hustler. It's going to be an album. And then uh, this year, I'm dropping uh, El Tigre del Norte. It's like a combination of uh, Spanish. Uh, Track corrido with a little bit of that. And we're doing some uh, corridos tumbados. But, you know, this is where it comes in. Yeah, for sure I'm doing a little bit, but I don't want to like, you know, follow the trend that everybody wants to do because it's the hot thing to do. But like I was telling you, bro, me being from Mexico, mm -hmm. like I do have a story to tell because I've been through a lot with my dad. Hey, I want to get I want to get into that. I was going to ask you where you from, like where you where you uh where you were born originally, and you told me you were born in May, yeah. right? Yeah. You said you were born in Guerrero. Uh -huh. Guerrero. Guerrero, uh, Cusamala. Guerrero, where by, uh, you know, where Acapulco. We're like not even like an hour away from yeah. Acapulco. So it's a beautiful thing. Then shout out to all my people out there in Mexico. Un saludo a toda la gente en Mexico. Dallas, Texas, hasta Acapulco, Cancun, Darwin, hasta South America. Me ya saben, me. Un saludo a toda la familia allá en Michoacán. ¿Te saliendo? Terra Caliente, my papas de Michoacan, I'm so Rosales, man. See, 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 so you'd be surprised how close uh, people are linked up. So, yeah, I was born, like I said, I was born in Mexico. Then I came over here when I was like two years old, bro. Mm. And I've been here since I was. You came to Dallas, yeah, we were two. Dallas, I used to live in Oak Cliff. I remember we had a, you know, Oak Cliff had double houses. Mm -hmm. So I remember living in the cliffs, man, for a while. I remember going to school. And next thing you know, we moved to the north side. And that's where I live now, you know, the north side. No, I read with North. The Web Chapel, Park Lane, what's up? 75. The yeah, Forest Lane. Yes, sir. The Forest Out D. The Skillman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my D's on. It's a beautiful cold, also. That's, that's, you know, that's a little part of where I'm from. Would you, uh, would you still go back and forth to Mexico? Or, yeah, as a young son, well, yeah, because like I said, when I was, uh, when my mom and dad were together, they were, they were getting the paperwork, you know, because I was born over there, so mm -hmm. of course I wasn't, it wasn't so easy. So once I got my paperwork, every summer I'd be out there, pull, pull. And uh, next thing you know, my mom and my dad to separate, and um, I didn't realize, bro, that my shit was expired. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anything could happen, you know, because like nowadays, you know, especially if you're not born here, bro, and you get in trouble, they can deport you, like. You know, and, and that's what happened to my brother. That's what happened to my dad, bro. Like my dad, he he had his shit together. You know what thing about my dad, bro? He taught me to never give up. He went to college, graduated. Anything he said, he right, so he did it. So that's one of the reasons why I'm out here, because my family has always been like a go giver. You know, he went to uh, college down in Mexico. No, he came over here. He came over here. He went to mechanic school. He went to college, graduated. So like I said, bro, everything happened for a reason because my dad was a. Uh, if you think I'm a hustler, my dad was 10 times a hustler, mm -hmm. you know, someone would talk. I come from a family that, you know, is part of that, you know, the culture. I don't want to say too much, but it's part of that Mexican culture that, you know, that the drug movement and shit. But it's crazy because it's not something that I'm proud of, but something that, you know, you learn that, you know, at a young age, you're part of a family that, 
they have to do what they have to do to get to where they got to be at. So, but and that part of your family was around that, so yeah. that the hustling and. Well, like I said, it's, it's a story that I'm telling, bro, because down the road, I'm gonna, I, I want to write a script about it. You know, I want to write a little script about it so I can make a movie down the road. It's going to take yeah. time. It's going to take time, just like you said. But I, I started realizing that at a young age because, man, one time I went to McAllen. That's a little story. We went to McAllen my dad, right? And this is the time where my mom and my dad separated from my dad. Like I said, he went to college from mechanic school. So everything just made more sense as I was getting old. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, cool. So we go to McAllen. We're out there, we're chilling. And you know, my brother was always the gangster out of the family. I'm the brother of the family. Yeah. My brother was a gangster and like, my brother, they, we went to McAllen, my dad's like, we're gonna go feed some cars, whatever, whatever. And um, we get there and it's like, you know, it's McAllen, Texas is fresh. It was, it was before they had all that, before it came up. So um, we get there, we get to a house and he said, he tells us, hey, don't, whatever you have to do, don't, don't leave the house, mm-hmm. just stay in the house. Cause the, we had trouble with the neighbors. So my dad leaves. And my brother's sitting there right here, like, man. He said, something's up, bro, something's up. Mm-hmm. And my brother was real nosy. He started looking around, he, was, he looked in the closet, he, he found oh, bricks. Yeah, he found a double bag and he said, I told you one day I was a drug dealer. He said, I was, I'm too young, bro, I'm telling you. Wait, I'm like, nah, bro, I'm like. Cause I was so innocent to the point that I was like, I can't believe it. So when we found it, my brother went, Zip. and there's a big coach bag, you know, a big old, man, like a body bag. Big old, big old, I, was, I, was, I was like, man. That was the first time I was like, I, I was introduced to that. And uh, so, yeah, bro, it's like I said, that's part of what I'm going to say down the road. I have a few stories that I have in my, in my corridos and the projects that I got involved. You talk about yeah, those experiences. Yeah. And then I'm a big fan of uh, Los Tigres del Norte, man. Shout out to the uh, Yeah, OGs right there. Yeah. Legends. So that's one of the reasons why the project is in the office. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why the project is called El Tigre del Norte, because we being, uh, we being from the north, and like my, it's crazy. Yeah. My my spiritual animal's a tiger, yeah. you know. So I said, "Fuck it, I want to do the project El Tigre del Norte," and then uh, the single, the first single is called Jefe. So yeah. soy el jefe de jefe, señor. Yeah, man, that inspired. Yeah, that sounds. That, sounds that was a little inspiration, bro. So Tigre del Norte, yeah, I like that. So that's that's the project that's gonna be. It's gonna be. Y'all be able to look out for that because that's gonna be next level shit. When yeah. that dropping, when you went, yeah. when you were uh, planning to drop that, bro. I'm gonna go a lot, yeah, maybe like in 30, 20, well, let me see, 60, 60 days, bro. So I'm putting it together as we speak. Yeah, putting it together as we speak. I'm like putting the singles together. Yeah. It's just like I said, it's different, bro, because like it, it's different from rapping, you know, like you have to follow, uh, you have to follow the, the on, melody. On the day del norte, that's all gonna be Spanish, like corrido. I'm gonna put corrido. Mix of everything. I'm gonna put Correa and I'm gonna put a couple like, you know, so like the like, some tracks where it's, it talks about the game. Yeah. So I can kind of give a a, a a variety to people that follow. Like, I know everybody likes Corridos, but some people want to hear a dope ass rap, you know what I'm saying? So, so, it'll, so it'll be in English and Spanish? Yeah. Oh, well, likely, yeah. Yeah. Because I also want to do something for my people, you know? Yeah. But they also like to listen to English. So we'll see how it comes out because, like, right now we're putting the playlist. And um, or I talked to Lopez, he gave me an idea. So we're going to be working on merch and mm-hmm. we got to work on posters. That was the world, the online yards, just to get the name out there. Get and, a lot of motion going, yeah. everything pump. Yeah. So that's coming out in the next 60 days if if I get my ass back in the studio and put that work in because, man, you know, time ticking so fast before you know it, you say, hey, we got this time. But see, the beautiful thing about it is that now I, I've started to like break it down. Cause you know, my year, my schedule works as they year. So there's four quarters. Mm-hmm. So I'll be working like every quarter. In my quarter. Yeah, every quarter I got to put numbers in. Yeah. So that's one thing that you, you got to be consistent. Even, you know, a lot of artists, they come out, they drop a video, they drop two, they drop three. And then next year they don't hear about me, you know? So you got to stay consistent. And that's why one of the reasons why I took a break because I have so much music to the point that I'm like, I could just sit back and take a year off but just start dropping music. Mm-hmm. Promote, promote, and flood the streets to the point that a lot of cats will have to play catch up. You yeah. know? But I don't look at it like it's a race. I look at it like I'm in a race with myself because, you know, I can only be the best I can be for myself. So, what's your uh, latest video that you've dropped? Okay, so um, so like I was telling you every uh, Halloween, I drop a theme song. So the last few years, I did the Killing It Like Michael. I did that, had the little B, like a Michael B. The Michael sound, yeah. Michael Myers. Yeah. 
And then, you know, we did the video, did a little cinematic. You know, before I dropped the video, I always drop a trailer, like a movie. A premium. So, yeah, so every time I drop a video, I'm going to do a little trailer like a movie. Because I'll tell you, now that I got the company, yeah, everything that I'm doing is going to be cinematic on another level. And then, so last year I did the Tunnel Vision. And it has the the beat is like the Exorcist. So... Tunnel Vision, that's the one you send. That's the, I heard it, that's dope. Oh. That's the extra system for one guy? There's a little shit yeah. in it, you know? So I was okay. like, okay, yeah, shout out to I my can preach. I can hear it now, the little, yeah. little tinny, tin, 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 you know? You know? Yeah. yeah, so yeah. once you hear it, bro, like when I heard it, go back, listen to but yeah, I heard that's a dope song. Yeah, bro, so I was like, and it's crazy, bro, because like, just sometimes I listen to my shit, uh, and I go back, and I always love to listen to my music, because yeah. I, I'll listen to it like not as me, but as a, as a person that loves music. And I and I and I listen to myself. I was like, how the fuck did I come up with these lyrics? Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm like, and not, I'm not saying that they like the dope. It makes dope you person. feel good when uh, yeah. you did that. I'm like, like, yeah, was it because like I always try to give it my best, bro? Like I got to the point now where like I don't want to be, I don't want to call myself the next hot thing. I just want to do the best I can do so people can enjoy that. And one thing that I learned from uh, Rick Rubin, shout out to Rick Rubin from uh, Dev Jab. She said it best, man. He said, if you can go in the studio and create good music, you're, there's never going to be a day that you cannot go into. Yeah. And, and you save yourself from stressing from going to the studio and say, oh, I got to make a hit. You know, we have that in the back of our head that we always want to make a hit, right? So, but you got to tell yourself, you know, hey, make great music so you can be able to continue to keep making good music. And motivated. Yeah, because we, uh, we all, as artists and anybody that is a rapper or anybody, they always feel like they have, they have a hit. But with that stress, that 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 in your mind, it's like a stressful thing because you're gonna be stressing yourself all the time. Being in the studio, I gotta write a hit. I gotta write a hit. Yeah. Then it doesn't hit. You know, just go in there and let it flow. Let it flow naturally. Mm -hmm. One more saying, if it's a hit, it's a hit. Eventually, if it's good, it's good. So I like it. Like I said, it, that's how it gotta be, though. So how do you get the idea for the those movie samples? Do you listen to? Uh, a certain material, like well, say you're watching a little, little bit easy. Yeah, all the say you're watching a movie. Boom, the you hear the intro and you hear that that, that little that little music. You're like, oh shit! I, I this this will sound clean as a sample. Yeah, is that what goes through your mind? Yes and no, because sometimes I always do listen to the music, and I love I love listening to like movies and watching the movies. But sometimes my producer, like Little Norby, I try to Little Norby, he made the beat. He, and I had got the beat, and I was like, well, damn, this kind of sounds like that. So mm -hmm. then I started putting words together. So I'm playing, like, the producer would send me beats. So I was to Young Smoke. He'll send me, like, a track of 20 tracks, and then I'll be like, let me listen to them, and then I'll just pick the beats that I want. Yeah. Oh, and baby. So sometimes it just, like, it, it can just, I, I have the idea. Like I said, I wanted to do a Freddy Krueger song. And, I, you know, so... Do a Chucky. Yeah, the Chucky, yeah, for sure. Like I said, that'd be dope cheaper than everybody loves Chucky. Yeah, the reason I was asking is because I remember, uh, like, when I was first doing uh, my first couple CDs, that's that's how I was. Like, I'd watch a movie or some shit like that. I'd be playing a video game, bro. Bro, I hear a, I hear a melody. Man, this shit's badass, bro. And I'd tell my producer, hey, hey, use this shit. I'm sure. Like, I don't know if you know if you heard of Mega Man. Yeah. Like, I remember I was playing Mega Man, bro. I've heard of Satan ass. Eventually, I called my boy, like, oh, let me sample this Mega Man next shit. Boom. And made that shit to a song. That's a shout out to Luck and Stuck in the Movie. I go check it out. Oh, but, you know what I'm saying? It's, I'm guessing that's kind of like the, 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 like the art, art history or type yeah. shit. Like, I'm not saying like me. Like, oh, I'm, a, I'm an artist. Like, like, I'm an artist. But I'm saying like, well, like, I'm sure, like, as an artist, like, people hear different stuff and, like, they get ideas from it. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. For sure. Is that that's kind of that's what happened to you, right? right? Yeah, I listen, like I said, I listen to the beats and, like I said, all these scary movies, they have, like, a little melody. So, yeah, I get inspired by by movies everywhere, man. Like I said, I hear, I hear a beat and I hear a song uh, every day. I, every time I hear a song, I'm like, I could use the sound, I like this, and well, boom. But you gotta, like, link up with the right producers because. That's how you work, you know. So I'll link up, work with producers that are willing to be, that are holding to work too. Because yeah, what's for sale, dude? Yeah, shout to the producers, shit, or you know, they, they help make the the song. Well, without the producer, you know, it's all you don't got nothing. Yeah.
You gonna have to make all the tables like at lunch back in the day <laughs> with the pencil? Yes, sir. No, mm, but yeah, bro, uh, you got any other projects coming up that you wanna let us know about? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, they can check out. This year I'm dropping, hopefully, you know, like I said, I'm, I had dropped uh, Love Letters. That's already out on all platforms, Apple Play, you know, Pandora. And that's- Where'd you drop that? Did you I, just drop that? I did, I should have dropped it at the beginning of the year, but I was I was running late because I started learn. I learned the process of music. It takes three months to upload and everything to promote. So I was I was running behind on that one. Like I said, I was I was behind like a month. So I dropped it. I just I just put it out because I was I was anticipated to put it out, but I'm gonna re reintroduce it in the beginning of the year, uh, for February fourteenth. No letters and I got a couple projects. So that one it's uh it's twelve songs, man. It's a beautiful album, man. Love letters. If yeah, for all the girls that you know that been heartbroken, anybody that's been heartbroken, you know, listen to it. It's inspiration, and I also you know God is my inspiration too. You know to to be, you know, that is well to do the best. So that one in there, like that's it's, good. Yeah, it always. And uh, so the next project that I'm gonna drop with the it's called it's more like my introduction. It's called Rookie of the Year for 2023 for Jordan. It says, you know, um, that's why I'm calling it a rookie of the year because it's 2023 and it's a good. Oh, okay. Gotcha, so, got it. Rookie of the year, 2023. Yeah, so that was dropping this compilation of uh, a lot of songs that I've been, you know, that I've been working on and I might have some features. I might have one for sure, you know what I'm No, yeah, he's yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. I'll tell you, because it's all about like, yeah, I, I consider it anybody that's been hot that's still hot, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely. Appreciate it. Yeah, said. Um, so it's 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 it's, it's going to be a dope ass project because you know like Michael Jordan when he was a rookie, a lot of people that was mm. uh, like you know they, they used to poke him, they used to like, hey, it was a heavy game when he first came to series. He, he he didn't he didn't he didn't know it was that heavy until he came in the game and he showed him that you know I could be the rookie, but guess what? It's going to be dope. hey, you're a damn not. So we're later when we get to now. So. That's the inspiration that I got. I got the inspiration from Jordan, 2023. I said, man, so that's the album. It was already lined up, ready to go. I just got to put the songs, the features, and uh, do the video, bro. So I got this song called OT. Mm. OT, bro. And every time I listen to it, it reminds me of you. Every time you do your videos, you got them 83s and 84s sticking out like elbows. Yeah, I mean, bro. So I'm, that's, I'm, I'm pleased with Texas. Yeah, yeah, that's that yeah. Texas shit for real, man. So that's one of the music, why, like I said. Shout out Texas Wild Weeds. Man, hey, what up? Need some promotion out there at your boy. Ooh. Yeah, man. So, yeah, bro, we we'll get up out of here. I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Just a couple questions, like, let me see, just so people can know what type of shit you like, you know. Um, let me see, what's the first one? You know what I'm saying? You brought, uh, you brought some liquor, bro. Do uh, you like brown or or, or white? Or white liquor. Shit. My bad, shit, that blood just hit me. So I, love, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> that nah. kill you, man. That's the kill you. It will kill you for one part there, too. Nah, yeah, I love whiskey, man. I love whiskey and I love Hennessy. Like I said, back in the day, I used to sip Hennessy and Sprite. Yeah. And then we'll mix it up with that uh, Hennessy. Was it the Hennessy to make the Incredible Hook? Or would uh, Hennessy and the Hypnotic. Hypnotic. Hennessy and Hypnotic. They'll make the they'll turn into the purple oval. So that's a classic. That was that shit was strong. That was your, that was that twist of shit. That was fucking happy. Fucking lit. Yeah. Sneak up on your eyes. What I, nah, I moved up to the whiskey, but I drink tequila. I drink bocadas. Like I said, I love to, the women love tequila. So I'm not much of a big drinker like how I used to be, but I, I do like whiskey though. Like I, I like to sip a little whiskey here and there. So yeah, was back in the day we used to sip number beer, right? That drink too. Remember back in the yeah. day that syrup? Well, yeah, syrup too. Back in the day, that was that. Um, that was the war. That was the fall in that walk part shit. You know, I used to sip that extra with packs of the pints of the extra. And I knew it and all that shit. That tubs. Used to come pick them up in the cliff. Boom, my boy. Yeah. And it, and it like, yeah, but niggas fucked it up, bro. Yeah. Shit. It Appreciate it, John. <laughs> all right. Now, nah, but uh, yeah, bro, my next question is uh, on your, I'm you going to say you're, you're Mexicano, so I'm sure you love tacos. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love tacos? Yeah, I love tacos just like. See, now, when you fuck with, you like corn or flour? Or get that email? I like them both. Bro, I'm, like, I'm, 
like my women. Depending on the type of taco. I like them all. Is it like some peanut? I like, I like my women, but I like them all. Yeah. I like them all. Thick, slim, tall. He said he just said, he said how you feel at the moment. Huh? Man, I'm telling you, like, I go to one taqueria called La Paloma, and they already know what I like. I like it. Where's that at? Uh, there's uh, there's Palomas around. That's in the north side, but there's, there's some around everywhere. Just got one. Yeah, so okay. they're independent owned. So I go over there, give me a tostada camarón. I give me like a couple, maybe a couple of tacos de trimpa, mm. uh, tacos de buche. But I see every time I get my meat, I tell them to make sure to make it like crispy. Mm. You know? Buche, that's like part of the chicken, long like net. The chichi, yeah. The, 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 the muscle where you see that they know on the cows, you see yeah. the muscle. So it's, it's good. Take out the round buche, but it's tender meat a bit. It's tender meat. You tell me la lengua is is tender, but I've had lengua. Lengua is good. Yeah, lengua is good as they cook it right. Got to be noches over in the week. I mean, they got some good lengua. Hey, hey, after this, probably gonna go swing in the clear. You know, thing in the but yeah, where any other spots that you like to eat up besides the uh, paisanita, los paisanos, no. you know, I like to sit around and get them chips or something. One over there in the chapel, everywhere, bro. We got like I said, they're all different. They're all the pay. Have you been to the one in in OED? I'm Carol. Oh, is that a, uh, uh, the, there's that one that's over there by Davis, right? Uh, where? Of Davis? Davis or some, is it Jefferson? Davis, right? Oh, Paisanitas. I say we're talking about, uh, what's it called? La, La Paisana. La Paisana. They're all different, I'm telling you. Yeah, they're not by, yeah. I've, I've had Paisanitas. Paisanitas is this is straight. There's tacos everywhere, bro. I love tacos, but it's, it's hard. Like I said, it's hard to find a good, good, genuine taco. So when I went to Cancun, you know, we hit to the beach, and there's like a uh, Socalo. Bro, everywhere, They're like every five, every five steps, there's like yeah. a taco shop, taco shop, taco shop. So I, yeah. when I got all like making two things, um, two bro. The tortillas are just like freshly made. Yeah. The carnitas. The, are they fried? They fry them? No, they just they they're just freshly made. Yeah. You know, so they're so they're so like hot and soft. And then the carne is so fucking tender, bro. I couldn't even stop eating taco. I'm like making two and two and two and two. So it's like yeah. I gotta leave the sogalo before I when they have like the beef steak and all that other yeah. stuff. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, cause it's the difference between here and there, Mexico and 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 Texas food. It's a lot of Texas mix over here, but genuine Mexican food is like the only thing you can get is from your mom, you know? Yeah. So shout out to my mama. She be making the tamales. Yeah, make sure you hit me up. I got and dozens in the hats. What you need? Yeah, I, I, I pull up. The chile con raca, and queso con raca. Yeah, it's the down to chingo bling, man. The tamale king pain, aka you know that. But chingo, so yeah, man. I got another one. You like to smoke blunts or papers? Well, this is the trick. I seen you were rolling up. Yeah, and I roll me up a paper blunt so I could taste the weed. That way you can taste it, you know. But I also like, you know, blunts. We taste good in blunts too, but I had, to just, I had to switch it up a little, you know. The joints is not for everybody. Everybody don't like joints, but I do both, man. Like I said, it depends. The joints is real fast. I can roll me a joint like on the go. Blunts the same, but I guess it's either or. I like them all. Well, wait, wait, as long as it smokes. The strike, boo boo. And, bro, shit, well, you got anything else you want to let the people know? I just want to let everybody know. Appreciate the love, the support. Everybody that be, you know, be following me. Everybody that fuck with me. Everybody that hits me up. Everybody that texts me. Be like, yo, I appreciate the love because, like I said, I'm doing this for y'all. At the end of the day, I, I have something to say. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing music. And I want everybody to enjoy the good music that I'm about to put out more. So y'all yeah, ready? Y'all yeah. ready? Yeah. And we shout out to the homeboy Jake Flo, man. Appreciate you coming through. Yeah, make sure to check them out. Where can they eat you up at, bro? Instagram, Facebook, all that. Everything. Look, y'all can Google me as a J Flo Worldwide. All together. J Flo F L J F L O W World W O R L D Y W I D E. All together. Why? Google me, you can find me on my Instagram, my Facebook, you know, just just Google me. I promise you I'm the first motherfucker to pop something with my big head. Like I said, if y'all see me out in the streets, come fuck with me. I might have a mixed set I've been killed in it, so catch y'all love. Yeah, for sure. Ready right, bro. Appreciate you, man. Shit, shout out to the homeboy J Flo once again. Uh Gen Music Group, Trill Coast Hustlers, yeah. APAC Media. Yeah. Says your boy Chad Low, Trispill Podcast. I know what's up. Well, uh -huh. Shout out. Well, it was a good show, right? Yeah, we both. I was good, man. Yeah. I did good, man.